Hello, everyone. Welcome to the April 2019 edition of the Jet Global Success webinar series. I'm so glad you're all here. Today, I'm going to share some tips with you to help unlock the mystery of creating consolidated reports. For those of you who have attended one of our webinars in the past, uh, you may notice the new voice coming over your line. I'm Erin Stone, and I'm on the customer success team here at Jet Global. I've been with Jet for a little over a year, and this is the very first success series I've had the privilege of hosting. One of the common requests that we hear from users who reach out to us in customer success is how to create financial reports that are consolidated across companies, but also show the detail for each individual company. So I'm really excited to show you how that's done during today's session. The second most common question we hear is, hey, are you recording this webinar? And the answer is yes, I am recording this session. It'll be published to our blog uh, within the next couple of days, and you can find that on our website, jetglobal.com slash blog. I'm not able to take questions live during our webinar. However, uh, please make use of the question and answer pane um, in the GoToWebinar box and type in any questions that you might have along the way. Please don't be shy. I will make a separate recording to answer those questions and append it to this recording before we publish it. Before I dig into our topic for today, let me just take a brief moment to tell you about Jet Global Data Technologies. For those of you who may be new to Jet, or haven't attended one of our webinars before. I am speaking to you from the Jet Global headquarters here in beautiful but rainy today, Portland, Oregon. We've been in business for 17 years and have over 14,000 customers in 94 countries around the world. At last count, we were approaching about 220,000 individual users who leverage our reporting, budgeting, and business intelligence solutions. Some of you may know us as Jet Reports. However, we changed our name to Jet Global back in October of last year to reflect our global presence and vision. This slide always puts a smile on my face. It represents the great diversity in our customer base. While it's far from an exhaustive list of all of our customers, it illustrates the various industries and types of organizations who find value in our solutions from manufacturing to life sciences, nonprofits, JET really has something for just about any type or size of organization. And if you look really closely, maybe squint a little bit, um, you can find your company logo. So this success series is all about you, our customers. We want for you and all of our users to be rock stars when it comes to using JET Global Solutions. We host these webinars on the second Thursday of every month to share tips and tricks and knowledge, show you how JET can save you time, help you do your job better or more efficiently, or just keep you up to date on what's new. Now that you've registered and successfully accessed today's webinar, you have an all access pass to attend our future sessions. All you need to do is create a recurring event on your calendar copy and paste the very same GoToWebinar link that you use to log in today, and you're good to go. You're gonna use that same link each month to access the series. Today's session is oriented around our Jet Reports and Jet Analytics customers who are interested in learning how to create a consolidated report. Consolidation isn't available in Jet Basics, but if you're using Jet Basics, stay with me. Um, you might find a great reason to upgrade. All right. Now that we have that business out of the way, let's talk about consolidation. There are a number of scenarios where consolidation is applicable and relevant. For example, it's common for organizations to have multiple departments set up within their ERP systems. There's likely an interest to understand not only how each department is performing individually, but how they contribute to overall company performance. This information might be beneficial in informing performance improvements initiatives or readjusting performance expectations. Similarly, what about sales organizations who closely monitor salesperson performance? I'd be willing to bet that the VP of sales at your organization is looking at individual and team performance on a daily basis. 
Maybe two salespeople on a team of six are carrying the load for the entire team, performing well above their quotas, knocking things out of the park, while the remaining four are struggling a little bit. As a whole, the entire team could still be performing at or above expectation, meeting their rev revenue targets and hitting their numbers, but seeing how individual salesperson contribution breaks down might be useful to adjust performance goals or rebalance workload across the team. Maybe those two overachieving salespeople aren't total rock stars after all. Finally, the most common scenario we hear about here in customer success is consolidation of financial reports by company. So this is the example that I'm going to use today. So every month, I need to create my income statement. And to do this, I need to run the income statement for one company, and then I save it as a new Excel workbook. And then I go and I run it again for my other company, and I copy and paste those values manually into a new tab in that workbook. And then I create another tab, and I use Excel functions to sum up the values for each company into a summary report, and inevitably, I will fat finger one of the cells, mistype one of the formulas, and so something doesn't add up correctly. And now I have to go hunt through the report, find my error, spend a bunch of time correcting it. Why can't I just click a button, run a report that's going to produce a tab automatically with an income statement for each company and a tab for consolidated results for both of my companies. Well, the good news is that that's where Jet Reports comes in. Note that I am using a NAV data database today, but the technique I'm going to show you with this example will work whether you're using Dynamics NAV, Business Central, or GP. It's a very versatile solution to a common problem. We have four basic steps to building a consolidated income statement. I'm going to walk you through each of these using my sample database and cover everything you need to know so that you can start building your own consolidated report. Bear with me for a second. I'm going to log into my demo machine and pull up my income statement. Here it is. So here is my basic income statement. It's been configured to run for my company up here in the Jet Ribbon, Jet Corp USA. You can see I have a column for balance, a column for budget, and it's been run for the period of July 2016. If I come up and update the company in my Jet Ribbon and I choose Jet Corp UK and then rerun the report for the same period, you'll see that the numbers are going to change to reflect the results for that company. Now, if you'll recall, what I want to do is to run this report so it creates a sheet for Jet Corp USA, a sheet for Jet Corp UK, and a sheet that combines the results for both the companies. So step one, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to return to design mode. I don't want to make any changes while I'm in report mode. And I want to select the report options tool from my Jet Ribbon. As a quick aside, if you missed February's webinar, my colleague Josh dedicated an entire session to the report options tool. I strongly encourage you to go back and review that. Um, the recording is posted on our blog, um, so go and check it out. With the report options tool open, I'm going to create a new report option that I'm going to call company. So I'm going to click my cursor in that first empty row, get a type company, and I'm going to put in a value of a star or an asterisk here in the value column. This is going to allow me to return all of the values for the, company that, for the companies that I have in my database. Now I need to create a lookup so I can find all of my company values. I'm going to do this by clicking on that little plus sign in the lookup column. Now, what's the best way for me to find a list of all of my companies? In this case, I'm going to create what we call a nested NP function inside of this lookup to retrieve my company list. Remember, the NP function is our utility function, and it includes a number of helpful tools and operations to help you build reports. I'm going to click my cursor into my table parameter here, and then from the nested jet function menu, I'm going to choose insert NP. The good news is that 
one of the features in my, or one of the tools in my NP function is a companies lookup. So I'm going to double click to select companies. But I'm going to leave the company filter and data source blank. And the reason for this is that it's going to allow you to filter out or exclude any test or demo companies or data sources that you may have um, in your database. I'll return to that NL function in my lookup. And in the field parameter, I'm going to type a name. I'm going to say company. If I don't type a name or a value in that uh, field parameter, you're going to get an error in your report. Um, so just something for you to remember when you go back and try this yourself. All right, we have updated our options page and you can see here that uh, a new row has been created here with our company option and our lookup. So now it's time to add a cell in our report page that references, references back to that new company uh, value. So I, I'm going to select the cell in my report where I want that company name to display. And I'm going to create a cell reference back to my options sheet and select that value. I'm going to use F4 on my keyboard to lock it down absolutely, and then return to my report. The next step is now updating all of my balance and budget fields for each account to reference that new company field that I just created. That's going to allow you to override the company that's selected up here in your jet ribbon. So I'm going to click in my first uh, account column here, and I need to go update my GL function to point to that company field. So I'm going to open my GL function, I'm going to scroll down, choose the company parameter, reference that cell D8, lock it down, and done. Since that since each of my account fields here is using cell references to pull values and display values, I can very easily update this report by copying and pasting that cell or that uh, function that I just created into all of my other account fields. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now to update my report. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm being really careful as I do my pasting that I'm not pasting into a sum or a subtotal field. So just be super careful as you are making your updates. Otherwise, your numbers are going to be really wonky. Great. Everything has been updated. I'm rerunning the report. And even though JetCorp USA is selected up here in my Jet ribbon, since my GL functions are referencing back to that company cell, you notice it's overriding what's been selected up here. And I know that because my balance and budget are double what they were before. That's because it's combining the results from both of the companies I have in my database. So now is the fun part. I get to create those sheets that are going to help me create a individual income statement for each of my companies while preserving the summary report that I just created. I'm going to go back to design mode, and I'm going to copy that summary sheet. I'm going to choose move or copy. I want to move this to the end of my report, and be sure I indicate that I'm creating a copy here. Choose OK. And now I need to use an NL function to insert sheets. So I'm going to click my cursor into that company field. I'm going to come up and choose my NL function. I want to insert sheets. And then in my table parameter, I'm going to use another nested NP function to reference my company field. So I'm going to choose nested jet function, function, insert NP. I need my companies. And I want to retrieve that from that company field that I created. And I can do that very easily by choosing report options from my function wizard, choosing company. Let's try that again. There it is. 
and then I'm going to go back, type company in my field here, and then fingers crossed, holding breath, I'm going to click OK, run my report. And just like magic, I have my summary page. It's been preserved. And the NL Sheets function created a sheet individually for JetCorp UA, UK, <laughs> a sheet for JetCorp USA. And if I do a quick little validation, looking at a couple of my numbers, I can confirm that my summary sheet is in fact correct. And the NL Sheets function actually names those tabs for you automatically as well. And now you have a consolidated report. So let's cut, recap the steps that we took to create that report. So let me go back to my presentation here. So first step is to create or update your report options and then use a nested NP function to include a filter for the company or department or whatever you wish to consolidate on. For more information about using report options, again, take a look at our success series webinar from February of this year. The next step, um, I showed you how to add a cell reference to your main report that references back to that a company field that you added to your options tab. Then I walked you through updating the GL function for each account to reference the company filter. Finally, I demonstrated how to make a copy of your sheet and use the NL Sheets function to create a sheet for each company when the report is run. And now you know how to create a consolidated income statement. But before you go and start using your new consolidation skills, um, here's a preview of what's coming up in our next couple of success series sessions. Next month, uh, Sarah will be back. She's going to talk about report scheduling and automation. If you fantasize about how much time you could save if you didn't need to manually run and distribute your reports, the scheduler is for you. And then in June, Todd is going to be here, another new voice to the webinar series. And Todd's going to teach you about choosing the right data source for your reporting and dashboarding needs. So I hope you're super excited about going back and applying your new consolidation skills to some of your reports. You can access the recording of this session as well as the addendum that, acts, that addresses any questions you raise during the session within the next few days. And then be sure to come back next month for more tips and tricks. Finally, uh, be sure you take a moment to fill out the short GoToWebinar survey that's going to pop up when you exit out of the session. I want to know how you liked the session and would love to hear your ideas for new topics to cover in future sessions. And with that, I will wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll look forward to talking to you again next month.